farm, family, community. This is Midwest Farm Weekly. Good morning, I'm Elaine Wells and welcome to Midwest Farm Weekly. We are once again broadcasting from the WPS Farm Show in Oshkosh, a true tradition for communities across Northeast Wisconsin because as we find out from Matt Cullen with WPS, this truly is a draw for people, not only across our state, but regionally as well. Absolutely, and we're very thrilled to be able to bring the 62nd WPS Farm Show back here to the EAA grounds in Oshkosh. We have approximately 20,000 people that we expect will attend over the course of the run of the show here in Oshkosh and as you mentioned this is not only an event that draws people from here in the state of Wisconsin where agriculture is such a big part of our economy here in the state but also from across the United States and internationally as well we have exhibitors from Canada that are joining us this year along with exhibitors from 22 different states across the country. Make that connection WPS very involved in our agriculture communities but why all those years ago did they start a farm show? You know our farm show started back in 1961 back at the old Brown County Veterans Memorial Arena in Green Bay and at that time it was really to showcase the benefits of using electricity on farms and we had 25 exhibitors at that very first show and, and the state-of-the-art technology in those days was silo unloaders, vacuum pumps, milk coolers and now as we advance forward to 2024 we've got all sorts of different technology and innovation that's here at the show. WPS, though, still walks with farmers as they use that technology on their farm and use it in the most efficient way possible. You have an entire team here ready to meet with their agriculture customers. As much as we want our farmers to be able to come to the show, see the products and the innovations that can help them, we also want them to stop by our booth here in Hangar A, the WPS booth, so that we can talk with them. You know, we understand that trying to take that time away from day-to-day -day operations is so tough, and so this is a great opportunity for them while they're here at the show. Come and speak with us. Let us know about what you're doing on your farm. If you're thinking about any upgrades or expansions of your farm, we can help you with the wiring and the energy use on that farm so that you're using it efficiently and you're managing your energy use overall. We appreciate you hosting us once again here for an entire episode of Midwest Farm Weekly. You always connect us with such fascinating guests. One of them joining us right now is Elizabeth DeVries, who is here from 4G Egg Fashion. I'm wearing this in the milking parlor next time. I love it. You you bring joy to us, but you bring a really important product to the market as well. Introduce us to your company. Yes, my name is Elizabeth DeVries. I'm the owner of 4D Egg Fashion together with my husband and my stepson, Bram. Um, we introduce a whole full line of work clothing for people in the milk parlor, but also outside of the milk parlor. So for farming, we have all the waterproof gear, but also now the nylon gear, which uh, you can wear on any farming, uh, but also for kids. So we also have a full line of kids clothing whenever they play outside, if, you, if they help you in the barn, but also just kids like you and I uh, were, when we were small, uh, playing outside and not getting too dirty. Well, as a dairy farm mom, I say thank you. This is an innovation. What about the WPS Farm Show was the right spot for your business to exhibit? We think it is because it's in Wisconsin. And as you know, Wisconsin still has a lot of large scale, but also small family farms. We live from those farms. So we have a lot of people uh, ordering our clothing online on the web shop. Uh, so we want to connect with the people who already buy products from us. A lot of dairy moms, by the way. And there's a whole Facebook group called Dairy Moms. So we also check it out as well. Uh, but also the, the large-scale dairies, we hope they, they're going to stop here. We also want to meet new customers, so we brought a whole, we have a whole boot full, full with clothing and a whole line uh, we have available here. Well, another innovation in egg that you are going to find at the WPS Farm Show. We hope that you will stick around for the half hour that is ahead. We promise it will be a moving experience. I had to acknowledge the cow in the room. More Midwest Farm Weekly straight ahead. Well, Jeremy Hansen here from Fox Valley Technical College for Life on the Farm. And joining me today is Jeff Ditzenberger. Jeff, thank you so much for your time today. Well, thanks for having me, Jeremy. Jeff, I appreciate it. Jeff, we're at the Oshkosh Farm Show this week. And remind me again, what do you do for Big Iron? So I'm the district manager for Big Iron Auctions. We're an online auction company that's based out of uh, Nebraska. 
and uh, started by a couple of farm kids, FFA kids, that uh, saw a need to help farmers move their assets either during retirements or uh, maybe they had some excess surplus equipment and stuff. So they started an auction company and then uh, down the road saw that maybe being on the internet might, might help people out instead of just being in the local communities and uh, actually did their first online auction on dial-up. Uh, there's a cool video of it where, you know, they say internet in at $200 and everybody's looking around like, what's going on? And uh, now with what we went through in 2020 during COVID, we're strictly an online auction company platform. Uh, we sell livestock, ag equipment, uh, real estate, classic cars, classic tractors, uh, the whole gamut of, of uh, equipment like that. Right. And, and Jeff, how has auctions been this year so far? Um, they're still steady. I mean, I feel like the industry has kind of corrected itself a little bit. We're not seeing the, you know, the record-breaking prices like we did a couple years ago. Supply chain has been improved some on that, but uh, we're still getting a lot of phone calls and getting a lot of auctions out there. We're on every Wednesday, uh, selling thousands of items, and and uh, you know, we're just we're getting that exposure for people instead of just their local exposure. We're getting them out in front of 600,000 plus registered bidders uh, every Wednesday. Right. And Jeff, you know, besides Big Iron, you were just involved in a documentary that just aired on, on PBS, like this week, actually. Tell me about that a little bit. So I had got the opportunity uh, to be on a full-length documentary. Uh, it showcases four farmers from across the Midwest, uh, myself in Wisconsin as a, as a uh, corn and soybean farmer, because that's what I was doing before I started this. I've been a farmer basically my entire life, had my first calf when I was about four years old. Basically, um, it kind of goes through our struggles with agriculture, not just from prices and, and uh, the lack of control that we have in that business, but also uh, a lot of mental health things. Uh, addictions, alcoholism, uh, and that kind of stuff, and, and how we've how we've succeeded in in, in moving past that, and hopefully um, getting that message out there, the message of hope that you know what you can talk to people about your problems. It's okay to not be okay, and uh, um, just because you're having a bad day doesn't mean that it's a bad life. Right. And the, and the name of the documentary is Greener Pastures, correct? Yes, it's Greener Pastures. Right. And you know this is an absolute real look at common problems every farmer faces, right? It is, and it was kind of interesting when I first got the email and, and asked me if I would be be part of it. I was, first I thought I was being scammed, obviously, and then I'm like, oh, yeah, let's, let's take a look at it. And uh, uh, it's about as close to reality TV as you can get. Um, they were in, they lived in my house for different times throughout the four or five year time period. Obviously COVID slowed things down quite a bit. Uh, went to my speaking events, went to, you know, did, um, you know, went through a couple harvests and planting seasons with me and saw the breakdowns and saw the, I mean, even Santa gets mad on, on, on the film. <laughs> I'll just right. give a little segue on that. Uh, that's one of the things I do in my community is I, I, I'm uh, the, the big fat, jolly red suited guy. And, uh, but it just brings back that whole reality that we're all, we all have struggles. We all have things that are, that are troubling us or, or, or giving us challenges. And, and obviously in the agricultural community, just like the veteran community, we speak a different language. And uh, that's what we kind of want to do is, is let the consumers know that, you know, one, food just doesn't come from their grocery store. Uh, there's people out there that are still putting blood, sweat, and tears in. And uh, we want to let those people that are producing it know that it's okay to have some of those tears. Right. In the documentary, you mentioned you, you had a, a nonprofit. You're part of a nonprofit yes. group, correct? Yep. So I had my own suicide attempt when I got out of the service uh, right after Desert Storm. Kept it a secret. I uh, actually got charged with a crime. Kept it a secret for many, many years because uh, I was less embarrassed of the stigma of having the uh, felony on my record than I was of admitting that I'd had mental and, and suicidal thoughts. And uh, anyways, buried a really good friend of mine in 2014 wrote a blog about it for the Wisconsin Farm Bureau Federation and uh, it went viral. And then I did a, a speech for uh, a Madison Dane County uh, Safe Communities and talked a little bit about my military career. I was on a great big ship that needed a tugboat to get it into, into, into port. Or if we broke down, you know, they'd, they'd get us uh, out, of the, out of the ocean and into getting repaired. And I got to thinking, why can't life be like this? Like if you're a big ship struggling out there, why can't you have a tugboat that you can call? And so, Tugs was born, talking, understanding, growing, and supporting, because even big ships need little ships sometimes. Right, and it's a wonderful story. 
I, I think we can probably view this on PBS, uh, on their website, correct? Yes, the documentary is on uh, PBS. Uh, again, it's called Greener Pastures. Uh, you can simply Google Greener Pastures documentary and it'll pull that up. Uh, it'll be streaming on Independent Lens uh, for a while. Uh, if you want more information about my organization, um, we have a website, tugsgroup.com. Uh, otherwise, if you want to get a hold of me, it's the same. It's uh, tugsgroup at gmail.com. Jeff, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate your story. And again, this document was excellent. Thank you. And as I tell everybody, you know, in a world where we can be any, anything you want, be kind, but remember to be kind to yourself too. Absolutely. So for Life on the Farm, I'm Jeremy Hansen. Our international portion of our show, you could say, Highland Manufacturing here all the way from Canada. Matt Harder joins me to talk a bit about their company and some new product innovation. Good morning to you. Good morning. Well, let's start with an introduction to Highline. Sure, yeah. So Highline is an uh, equipment manufacturer based out of Saskatchewan, Canada. Um, so started there 30 or 40 years ago. Uh, primarily started uh, building rock pickers um, and then got into, you know, more livestock feeding. Um, so bale processors is a very big product for us um, and recently getting into more of the mixer market. And that is what we're seeing at this year's show. You are debuting a brand new self-propelled mixing option? Correct, yep. So that's a thousand cubic foot. Um, it's the only North American built uh, self-propelled mixer of its kind. So it's a twin screw, a uh, thousand cubic feet and really trying to just improve feeding efficiency across the board. So that basically takes three pieces of equipment and combines it into one, one operator and um, yeah, just really trying to improve that feeding efficiency and whether it's in dairies or beef operations as well. And is some of that innovation due to customer demand? Are people saying, gosh, we're struggling with labor. We need to, yeah. to be able to accomplish more with less. Yeah, definitely. And that's, you know, one of the biggest things is, you know, kind of removing the skill and, you know, letting the equipment do that. So, and then just, you know, something that has to be reliable. It has to feed cattle every day. It has to mix properly. So that's our goal is every day that machine's going to feed cows. Certainly connecting with new customers brings you to a show like this, but why return to WPS Farm Show year after year? Yeah, so we've definitely seen a massive market. You know, you drive through the country and there's dairies everywhere and you see cows in the fields. So, um, you know, just trying to expand our market here. We uh, have quite a few machines ac across Western Canada and then have a machine in Wisconsin as well. So, uh, you know, just trying to grow that and expand our you know, our product line in the States. So. so if we see this and we're intrigued and we say this might be the fit for my operation, how do we get in touch with you and look into placing an order? Yeah, so we have dealers uh, across Wisconsin and, you know, the other northern states. And then uh, you can do that or even visit the website, um, get in touch with one of our territory managers and they'll set you up with a demo. And we want to see machines out there on farms. So. Congratulations on the innovation and the work being done to fill farmers' needs. We'll have much more from the WPS Farm Show after a short break. Welcome back to Midwest Farm Weekly and our highlights of the WPS Farm Show. We are now in Hangar D and there is one impressive piece of equipment behind me. We are going to dig into the 360 Yield Center with Dave Murphy. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you. Well, what an eye-catching display here. Introduce us to your company. Absolutely. We're 360 Yield Center based out of Morton, Illinois, which is right in north central Illinois. And we've traditionally been only an aftermarket company, but the rain machine is our first step into original equipment and we're having a ton of fun uh, moving these around Wisconsin. I'm enjoying seeing this up close and personal. Jeremy Hansen had a chance to see it in action as a Life on the Farm segment. Talk about the concept of this and how it benefits farmers. Yeah, so 360 is a banding company. Everything that we do is banding uh, fertilizer or liquid for the farmer. So the machine behind you is an autonomous way for a farmer to band any liquid onto his crop from planting all the way through harvest. It's got high clearance obviously for corn and we band uh, water, manure, liquid fertilizer or any other type of liquid right at, on the row for the farmer. Talk about the flexibility this gives a farmer. You know, we had irrigation that were the center point pivots, but gosh, sometimes in Northeast Wisconsin, we haven't had the need to install those. This kind of machine can tackle your needs based on the season. Absolutely. So the farmer has 100% control through an app on his phone. So he can set his rate in terms of inches of rainfall or gallons of other types of liquids or pounds of fertilizer. And that machine will just go out and work all, uh, all day long, 24-7, 365, if he needs it to. And uh, we will continue to give the farmer options 
options to be able to put on what's environmentally best and what's economically best for his operation of any type of liquid. And when we're moving out that liquid throughout the season, it allows us to apply it at a rate that makes sense, right? Absolutely. Just like all of us eat throughout the day and drink throughout the day, when we uh, when we put our plants through those drought periods or if we short them on, on the groceries, they go through stress. And so this is a way for a farmer to increase his overall uh, yield and profitability by being able to bring the plant whatever it needs every single week. When we talk about how this actually moves, is it on a track? Is it on a tether? How does it make its way back home, so to speak? Absolutely. So farmers use GPS steering now. So we take a GPS line from a planter or we create one for like a hay field. And then this machine will drive down to one centimeter accuracy, wow. repeatable 24-7 all season long. So it'll go up and down the rows of corn without knocking any crop over. And we're going to see these out and about in our communities. There's a map that shows you are really getting these onto a lot of farms. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to be on nine different farms here in northeast Wisconsin this summer and about 150 nationwide. If somebody wants to know if they are the right operation for this machine, talk about next steps for them. Yeah, the next steps would be to go to 360rain.com or download the app from the App Store. It's just called 360 Rain, and you can start working through some of the information and the videos, and you'll even be able to map your own field on that app and see if it's a fit for you. Well, congratulations on meeting the needs of our farmers and innovating. One of the highlights here at the WPS Farm Show. Another highlight, the food tent. From potatoes to dairy, bison to beef, Wisconsin agriculture is on full display. Carrie Goss joining me from the Wisconsin Cattlemen's Association. Carrie, this is one of the best sellers. Yes, for sure our best seller. And then our ribeye steak sandwich is our number two. Very Talk popular. Here. about getting to connect not only with farmers and ranchers, but consumers in general. This is such a critical part of this entire farm show. Yes, I love um, interacting with all of the customers that come. We have so many um, customers that come to us at every show we're at so we love to see them again at the next show and then we also get to work with great groups like today we have the Oshkosh West FFA group they're wrapping our sandwiches for us so it's just a really fun event. I love your connection to the industry give us a little bit of behind the scenes and how you got involved with Wisconsin Cattlemen's Association. Yeah um, so my husband and I are actually restaurant managers or owners and um, someone that is a member of the association approached us and said hey what do you think about running this the steak trailer for them. So we did. The and it's been great. History. Yeah. And uh, you can see why she said yes. One bite of this, it's easy to sell me on anything. Much more coverage after a short break. Welcome back to the WPS Farm Show, site of Midwest Farm Weekly. I'm Melaine Wells, and I'm excited to be talking robotics now with Greg Apps of Apps Equipment. What a beautiful booth, very attention-getting, Greg. Certainly, this is something that draws a lot of people in. What is it about robotic technology that has people stopping in their tracks? Well, I think the advancements in robotics are just astronomical. Over the past, we've been doing robotic milking for over 20 years, but now to the robots are getting much faster, much more accurate, and the cost of ownership is down uh, considerably over the last 20 years. Who do you see considering robotics that maybe even 10 years ago looked and it wasn't the right fit? Who now should take a second look? So that's a kind of a loaded question, but to be honest with you, almost anybody. Okay. Because your, your single uh, small dairy who wants to keep dairying or they want their children to buy into the farm or whatever that's not possible if you don't have I mean otherwise you're tied down for 365 days a year seven days a week mm -hmm. whereas also in the large dairy it's cost of producing 100 pounds of milk and that is by far going to be lower with a robot than any other way because the labor is not there we're seeing robotics certainly take hold in other sections of our barn when it comes to pushing feed. Now, even a manure management system? Yep. We have a, a manure collector over here that uh, basically goes around the barn, sucks up at the manure, and goes and shoots it out in where it's supposed to. So, uh, yeah, robotics are everywhere now. I mean, you can't go into a store anymore without a self-checkout. So, that's really important. It's a bit like a self-checkout for cows, I guess it, you could well, say. Pretty much let the cows milk themselves. That's what happens here. <laughs> Let's talk about your involvement here at the WPS Farm Show. Why is this such an important uh, connection for you to make with your farmers? So for me, it's really important because it's right in my backyard, basically. But also, I mean, we have a lot of, we have a lot of customers around here and customers 
in basically in Wisconsin. So, I mean, it's very important to show them what's new and how affordable it is. You get a chance to talk to a lot of local farmers. What are some of the needs that they are hoping to fill in the year, years ahead on their farm that you hope apps can really help them manage? I, this labor is still the number one problem. It's the second biggest cost on a dairy farm is labor. First biggest cost is feed. Well, then there's labor is second. And that's all they're talking about nowadays. So next steps, if we're watching and wondering if this is a solution for our farm, you can retrofit a lot of facilities or certainly build new and make these systems work for your farmers. Absolutely. We've even gone one step further. This building behind me um, is basically 8 by 12 or 8 by 16, I think it is. But it's deliverable with the robot in. We set it in place, plug it in and play. So that's how automated our system has gotten to put them in. Craig, it takes a lot to make me speechless, but you have just taught me something new and innovative here at the WPS Farm Show. I thank you for your time and commitment to bringing our farmers the latest technology. You can find details on all of the great businesses and brands featured in the Midwest Farm section of wearegreenbay.com. Thank you for spending part of your morning with us here at the WPS Farm Show. Get it on your calendar for next year. It is a great local event.